In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Adobe Capture CC. Okay, let's get started here. So while I was away on vacation and working with Adobe Captivate Draft, just trying to get some rough ideas uh, for some future e-learning projects, um, you know, I noticed that I received a notification from Adobe that Adobe Color CC was being uh, or was becoming a part of Adobe Capture CC. And so I decided to check that out and I'm going to give you guys a first hand look at what I encountered there. So Adobe Capture CC is an application that includes the previous ability to um, use what color had when that was the ability to capture uh, your own color themes or color palettes, if you will, that you could use in your other uh, Adobe products or projects rather. And uh, it's really straightforward to use on the color tab. I simply I'm going to um, uh, use my camera built into my my iPad. And sorry, just. Uh, accidentally clicked on one here and we're just going to open up the hit the plus button there and it's going to open up my camera application and I'm just pointing it out the window there and I can just tap somewhere to freeze the image and of course I can tweak this a little bit by choosing a different blue and maybe I want a darker green here and uh, you know it's fall where I live so not a lot of super dark greens but we can choose some different colors and create our own color palette theme here. And once we're done with that, we can just capture that. And there we give it a name. It's color theme 10 by default because I've done this a couple of times already. And we'll just call this one neighborhood with the Canadian spelling, of course. Um, and we'll save that in my for Captivate library and I can actually make this discoverable in other words uh, published on coloradobe.com and then anyone can find that if they wish to use it feel free and we'll just go back to theme here and of course it it retains the image at the bottom there that I originally captured this particular theme from and I can now save that color theme with all the other color themes that I've used. So I can use those for uh, for various projects, in my case but, uh, particularly with Adobe Captivate. And uh, the other thing I can now do is I can capture a shape. So um, let's try something here. We'll try to, I'm just going to go landscape mode here for a moment. And we'll just capture this clock that I have on the wall here. We'll see if we can get a nice straight shot of that. And maybe that's something I can use for one of my projects as well in the future. So uh, you really want something with a lot of contrast. We're kind of missing out on that contrast there. Um, but maybe, you know, let's say maybe all I want is the, uh, let's try something else here. Let's try uh, looking around the room, see what we've got here. Let's try this. This is kind of interesting here. We've got, uh, we'll just go back to capture. And instead, what I'll choose is I'll choose this nice heart shape here. There we go. So I think we've got a pretty good capture there. And from here, I can, of course, uh, keep in shape or remove from shape along the bottom there. You see you've got the option for both. So when I select remove from shape, I can then remove just by rubbing my finger over the areas that I don't want to keep in that. You know, or tapping as well, but you can see my finger rubbing across those areas there and um, you know, if I had more time, I could refine this further um, and obviously take better photographs. Let's make sure the heart shape is retained as best we can. Again, you really need to work with uh, 
something with a lot more contrast than I have here. So kind of have the shape there. There's the idea. But the great part about that now is that I can save that shape and I can use that in the rest of my Adobe uh, projects that I'm working on. You can further edit this in Illustrator and maybe refine that shape so it's a little bit stronger contrast than what I've got here. So I'll go ahead and save that shape along the bottom there and add it to my uh, poor contrast library. Um, the next thing you want, of course, uh, or you might want, is brushes. And there's uh, some really neat stuff you can do with brushes. Uh, this first one is probably the one I like the most. And that's kind of this neat crystal-y kind of effect here. And uh, how I did that, let's take a look at the original image that that came from. That came from this uh, this woven effect that was part of the uh, beach chairs that we were sitting on. So I got a nice close-up shot of that with my iPad and uh, converted that into this brush here. So you can do that for lots of different things and uh, you know create the brushes that you wish to use for, again, your other projects that you might be working on. You could use these brushes in Photoshop and Illustrator and, and, uh, and so on. And uh, let's go back to the library here. Uh, let's take a look at another one here. This is kind of an interesting brush, sort of a liquid metal thing. That was just done with a, a simple photograph uh, that I took at the beach. And this one here. by the pool. So you can do just about anything, create any effect that you want. And of course, I'm doing these live, like I was doing these on the beach while on vacation, but uh, you certainly can take all your photographs and decide how you wish to incorporate them in Adobe Capture at a later time as well. The other thing you have, and I'm not much of an expert on this, is that you have the ability to capture what is called a look. And this is used for Adobe Premiere. So if you're creating a video editing project, obviously movies and videos, you have a certain look and feel throughout the entire film. You want that continuity. So uh, how do you create that continuity? Well, a look file is what you use. And this look file will allow you to capture certain tonal qualities and color qualities to your images and then you can apply that to an entire project in Adobe Premiere. I personally won't be using this aspect of the feature but I thought I would touch on it a little bit as well. Guys if you like the videos that I'm producing for you I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you thought this video was useful, helpful, entertaining, informative go ahead and give me a thumbs up.